Love Lessons, the show where healthy couples come to share their wisdom from the lessons they've learned in love. We discuss everything from money to parenting to social media and don't leave out stress and sex. Go get your pen and paper because class is now in session. Come catch your blessings. Welcome to Love Lessons, hosted by Trey Kearney. Very similar to the Johnsons, we are not just happy on Instagram and Facebook. We are, ah! happy. and so I have all the trace. I don't have his. I don't have his password to his phone, but it's often, and he just gives me the phone. And is like, can you return this? To return this text, or they put that on the DM. Can you check that or whatever? I have all his email, and it, it it wasn't like I need to give you this or you need to give me that. It's like we're integrating our lives, and there's stuff that I need to help him with, or you know, handle things for business, or you know, Tracy is so busy and people are trying to reach him and get in touch with him. So sometimes I'm like, I just need to go through all this stuff to make sure you get back to this person or that person. Um, so it happened very naturally and very organically. I remember my girlfriends gave me a surprise bridal shower and I guess they thought that I might, Tracy said, <laughs> she may have seen <laughs> something. In the DMs. So they were like asking me, you got his, you be in his DMs? I'm like, no, but I mean, I have access to it. I and I think from a man's point of view, and it comes down to trust. You know what I mean? You couldn't do that three, four years ago. I mean, my former wife couldn't do that because of the life that I lived prior to me getting myself fit. And if we all be honest as men, as Daryl said, it's not the, it's the assets behind that. So if you're cheating, if you're doing stuff, of course, I, I don't want to give you access to anything. But, you know, we have a relationship that is solid, that is built on trust. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Love Lessons. I am your instructor, Trey Kearney, and tonight our guest instructors are going to blow you away. Tracy and Cherie Syfax, they are ready for tonight. I'm telling you, they have come locked and loaded. I hope you got your pens and your paper because class is now in session. Listen, hold your edges, hold your wig because they gonna come tell the truth. And sometimes the truth will set you free. So come on in, um, Tracy and Cherie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, hello, Trey. Woo, even though I'm good for evening, you. Good evening, good evening. I'm, I'm good. I'm super excited to have you guys here. So we are excited to be here. And thank you for just always blessing us and giving us access to your platform. Even when we were newbies, we were a month in <laughs> on that on our video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I love y'all so much because y'all are one authentic, two transparent, and you you guys speak from a place of love, a place of honesty, and a place of just pure respect for each other. So I love that about you. So the first thing, just tell everybody how long you guys have been married. Actually, on the twenty second of this month, it will be ten months. Can you believe it's almost a year? So ten oh my months. Goodness, that be yeah. Really well. Yep. <laughs> wow. I have to say this though about um Sharif from the beginning. Um, she knew, and I don't know how she knew, but we'll talk about that too, that this was her man because I discovered Tracy from Sharif. She talked about him. She sent me a message and said, I have a podcast, a podcast called Men Hurt Too. She said, I got the perfect man that needs to be on this podcast. This is when they first start, when they first met. And I was like, okay, so I'm thinking she knows him. Like, she's like, this guy, <laughs> you you have to interview him, Trey. He's a per I'm telling you, you got to do this. So that is how I was introduced to the man she already believed in from day one. So I love that. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. And to find out that they had just really met. So the first thing I like to ask my couples is to just tell me a little bit about your family, your foundation. So I know this is a little hard, Tracy, and I, I mean, I know because you just lost your dad. Mm -hmm. So um, I just ask people, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, your relationship with your mom and your dad. So people could just get a feel of how Cherie was raised and how you were raised and how that works together. So just tell me a little bit about that, both of you. Yeah, um, well, I wrote a whole book from the block to the ballroom, basically chronicles my life story. But just to give you a little snippet, um, you know, I had my challenges when I was growing up. Um, my mother and father divorced when I was young. Um, my only brother was tragically killed when I was eight years old, um, tore my family apart. Um, my mother turned to drugs. My father eventually got himself together. Um, so, yeah, um, so uh, that relationship 
but you know it has definitely grown over the years since we everyone has gotten themselves together i think my mom been clean now for over two decades my dad probably has passed but my dad was clean you know 40 something years um so both of them got themselves together and the relationship since then has blossomed um you know last week i lost my best friend you know my dad was my go-to guy um my dad was my example um, when i you know even at the funeral Folks talk about, you know, what he was doing in the Asbury Park community around housing and working with the housing authority and Habitat for Humanity. Basically, a lot of the same things I do in my life now. So um, my dad has instilled a lot in me about community, about pride, about um, culture, about where I come from. Um, so and my mother, you know, and, and it's just so great that I've been able to uh, opportunity to spend some real quality time with both of them over the past two years, whether it was my birthday, the wedding, um, so many great opportunities. So loving my family, still loving them, and, and this is still good. Yeah, so I am um, a native of California. My parents um, both migrate, their, my, their parents migrated from the South. And so um, I have Southern roots in that regard. And as such, um, really grew up seeing my grandparents with that very traditional, very um, kind of masculine, feminine, defined roles um, environment, even though my grandmother worked. So my mother had me in high school. Her and my dad were seniors in high school when I was born. Um, but my mother was a Black Panther, so always an advocate always fighting for rights, always protesting, always debating. Um, and my father was like, cool as Sunday morning, just um, everyone loved to be around him. So I feel like I got really a good balance between both of them. I had really great relationships with both of them. It, very different. They were yin and yang. Um, my mother was very strict, an academician, um, very religious. So I, I had that structure and kind of that moral character and that compass that, you know, we all come back to at some point, no matter how, how far we wane one, one way or the other. My father was always my soft place. My father was my protector. So I had the benefit of having that youth in my grand and my parents raising me to some extent, but then I also had the maturity um, and really solid foundation of my grandparents too. Because when my mom, when my mom went to college, my grandparents took me um, for the first three, four years of my life, and then when my mom graduated, until she got established, my father's mother had me. So I had the real good fortune of having this, that stability. Um, now, my father did end up, you know, he was addicted to drugs at a point in his life as well. He was very much a womanizer. And I think I talked on one of your other platforms around, you know, my connection with men and how I had men that cheated on me a lot. And why for me, it wasn't like that's a deal breaker. It was because my father, you know, was that person. And that was, you know, good, bad or indifferent. I was comfortable with that. And that wasn't like, you know, um, a deal breaker for me. It didn't make a person a bad person, you know, but as I evolved in my own, um, you know, healing myself, I realized like, you know, you can love your father and you don't have to love that behavior. And you don't have to excuse it in men because as you value yourself more, you know that um, that wasn't a good behavior on his part. And um, he and I were able, before he tragically, um, unexpectedly died, um, and he and I were able to talk about that and have a lot of reconciliation. So for the most part, even though I was raised in a single family household, I had a very, very good upbringing that um, I, I, I attribute to who I am today with my upbringing. Wow, you you both said a lot, lot right there. That's why I like people to hear the family dynamic of where we come from to say, in my past relationship, I accepted cheating because it was kind of the norm for me until I figured out for myself, I could love my dad and that was a flaw in him. It didn't make me not love him the way that I love him. It didn't make me love him less. It made me love me more and yeah. not to accept that. That was yes. so good. That was so good. So Tracy talked about, you know, he had like a colored past and Tracy speaks freely of this in his book. And we'll let everybody know about the book so they can go get that book. But he speaks about he's been in jail. Um, he's he's done things that he's not proud of. He cleaned himself up. So when you were when you guys were blending families, because I want you guys to talk about this, because I know Tracy, um, um, Cherie is an executive 
alpha, I hate the word alpha female, but anyway, I will use it because in context of what people understand, she's right. a bad chick. She's an alpha female to be one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. I, I didn't want to be politically incorrect, but she's a, she's a, she's a bad chick. She's That's a, right. she's a yep. bad, she's a go-getter. She's a trailblazer. She's an innovator. She has people who answer to her and she's in high places in executive land. So when you guys came together and he said, I have a record, I have, you know, I've been in trouble and you had to go tell your family. Then when you met her, you had to go tell your family. How did you handle that, Cherie? Because I know most people like you going to go with some man that was in jail. Like, how did you handle that? Yeah. So, you know, historically, I had had a list and my list included a college educated man, uh, preferably a lawyer, a doctor. Um, my list included a lot of things. But the reality was, was I had dated lawyers and doctors and they had not been successful relationships. And so as I started doing my healing work and on my journey, I realized that it's more about how a man makes me feel. It's more about character and not those external things that society has made us believe are important. And so um, because of that, I really didn't have a problem telling anybody who my husband was because A, um, I own who I am. So, so as long as I trust my choice, those around me have to trust it. Um, and then my husband is confident in his walk and in his purpose. And we recognize that he would not be here. Obama, White House champion of change, you know, Princeton entrepreneur of the year, like, you know, New Jersey top 25 most successful, you know, and influential African-Americans if he had not been on that journey that he was on. So um, when I look at I, I did a again, as I was evolving, I looked at what I wanted my soulmate to be. And my soulmate allowed me to be me. My soulmate allowed me to flow and live a life of ease. My soulmate had integrity. So those are all things that Tracy has. It's not about how high he went to college. It's not about whether he's an MD or an ESQ or anything like that. It's all about how we flow together because we're so aligned in the things that we want to do in this world, in the way that we want to show up in this world, in the way that, you know, he's a leader, I'm a leader. So how do we lead in our community so that others can follow us or others can be inspired by us? So my friends and family, you know, one thing I love about my family is that they ride with me. If I love them, he, they love them too. And that, and that is really, truly how true. they are. Absolutely. And so, um, but it has everything to do with, they respect me. They've seen me on my journey and they know my intuition is strong. They know my faith is strong. They know my spirituality. I'm connected to myself. So I am not going to make decisions. I'm going to make decisions in the best interest of myself. And so no one ever even questioned. And my mother was staunch religious. So when I was like, Tracy's in the cannabis industry, she was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what about you Tracy when you when you brought Cherie around because we're talking about blended families with children and I know you have daughters and I know daughters are we skeptical we be like who this who this uh boss chick coming up in here who she thinks mm -hmm. she gonna be telling what to do because I mean Cherie comes with a presence mm -hmm. when it, if nobody don't know her when she right. walk in the room she don't have to say nothing mm -hmm. she just comes with a real presence Absolutely. So how, how was that, it, you know, introdu introducing her to your family and your daughters? And how did you make that transition smooth with the girls? Well, well, she made it easy. And and by the way, I have two girls and, and one boy. So it, I had to get a, 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 a mister in there also that I had to introduce her <laughs> to. But she really made that easy. Um, you know, she, yeah, she her presence, she makes her presence felt in any room. And that's with a warm smile. That's with a big smile. So you see that smile right there? Mm -hmm. She wakes up like that every single morning. So this was Aww. easy um, to um, to blend our family together. Um, my daughter loves Cherie. She calls Cherie her bonus mom. Um, my son loves her. Um, so it's been a great ride and be able to um, um, to blend our two families together. And far as me, you know, introduce, introducing her as this corporate lady, this corporate <laughs> executive that I married. <laughs> That was easy. That was real. Easy. <laughs> uh, she made it easy. So it, it, it's been great. It's been great to um, to blend both of our families together. And her daughters are my daughters. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a, got a new grandbaby now also. So it's been a great it's been a great to blend our both families together. And we're working on some amazing stuff to make sure we secure their future, too. Wow. I love that.
Can I say one thing too? Yeah. I don't wear a, a title and I don't wear, you know, a badge of who, who I am and what I do in the workplace. You know, I don't know that. I mean, I think people kind of know what I do around, you know, my in-laws and in-love family. Um, but I don't know that I, I, I lead with that. And, you know, we've talked about, you know, that on even other platforms where um, as, as executive women, um, depending on the type of man we want to attract in our lives, that isn't the most important thing. What we um, actually, the value that we usually bring to relationship is around, you know, peace and tranquility and support. And those are the intrinsic, you know, whether I am an executive or whether I, you know, was an order taker somewhere. Um, the more important things to Tracy are the soft places that I allow him to land. So even in you know in dealing and integrating with his family, it's never on some level of you know you know I work this place and I you know I have this many direct reports and I manage this much revenue. It's just you know I'm the person that loves your dad mm-hmm. and as me loving your dad, mm-hmm. you know I want us all to be integrated in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, when you walk in the room, there's no denying the greatness in you. Like, even on the screen now, you you always come correct. Like, I don't, I'd be like, if I saw you in a supermarket, I'd be like, who is this? Because you, I've never seen you. Right, Tracy? Am I lying? I've never seen you not correct. Like, I just be like, I came on today. I said, let me just put a little beat on my face because Sheree going to come on here representing because she always does. I mean, and I'm not only talking about, I feel it the glow from the inside of you. Mm. Right? Uh, so it's it's right, Tracy? It's not the it's not the external. It's what you bring from the internal that shines through so bright. So that's what I mean when you walk into a family. It's like, okay, dad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> son. Who we is? <laughs> Who this one? Where you get her from? So <laughs> let's talk about. I know Tracy, you you were married before. Cherie, were you married before? Yes, many moons ago though. I was young, so my yes. marriage has not been as recent. So I just want to know. Uh, a lot of people tell me. A lot of people that I know that that in their second marriage, they say it's so much better than the first. So what what makes the second marriage more productive and different from the first one for both of you? I think I think for me is because I've made all the mistakes and I've made a lot of them. I'm not proud of some of the stuff um, that I've done in my past. So, um, you know, lessons learned. Muhammad Ali said if a man thinks the same way as he did at 30 at the age of 50, he has wasted 20 years. So, you know, I, I'm almost 60 now. So I've learned a lot of hard lessons. And, 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 and to know that this woman um, is my wife for life and that I love her dearly. Um, some of the mistakes I've made in the past, I would dare never, ever repeat those mistakes again. And now actually make sure I go out my way to be a better person and a better husband. And for me, I was so young and I just didn't have a lot of guidance. I mean, like who really teaches us how Mm. to, to navigate in relationships, right? I mean, who really, you know, we learn in school how to talk and we learn our ABCs and our math and all the history facts and things like that, but we don't really learn relationship skills or dating skills or relating skills. And um, so I knew for me to attract the type of marriage that I desired, I had to show up differently. And, And I did that work to do that. I realized like, you know, I'm not living the life that I want to live. There's some some emptiness. And for me to attract that relationship, I need to relook at some things, some mistakes that I made um, and 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 work on correcting those. Mm-hmm. So similar to Tracy, you know, just made the mistakes in the first marriage and then other subsequent relationships and grow grew from those, you know, appreciate the the lessons that I learned. And definitely try to apply something different in a marriage. And at this age, also recognizing this had to be the right thing, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. I I wasn't going to get with 75% is right and 25% is wrong. I wasn't, you know, I I needed to get as close to 100% as possible because Mm -hmm. I want life to, you know, be one of joy all the time. And Mm -hmm. if if it's not right with the person that you live with and that you wake up with every morning, you know, that's problematic. Mm -hmm. So, um, So I tried to put the right things in place so that I could attract the right person. I love y'all so much because I I love your transparency. So should divorce ever be an option? And do you guys have deal breakers? 
Well, I, I, divorce is not an option for me. Mm -hmm. It would never, there's nothing that I would just say we, we have to be divorced. I mean, we definitely talk about a lot of things. We talk about, you know, infidelity. We talk about, you know, how we respect each other. We have those conversations. And, you know, I'd like to believe that at this stage of our life, I mean, our marriage is so good. Like it is really we're friends. We enjoy all the stuff we do, even all the attention that we get. Like we, we've learned how to navigate it. It's not easy all the time, every day. You know, we've had some tragedy. Obviously, I lost my mother right before we got married. Tracy recently lost his dad. Emotions running high. I'm still grieving to a certain extent. Now he's grieving. You know, there's a lot that goes on. But at the end of the day, it's all about how do we learn from maybe some of the bumps that we've had and how do we grow from them, grow, grow together as ver versus apart. And so um, for me, divorce is not an option, but at the same token, you know, my requirement is that Tracy respect me enough where he wouldn't do anything that would have us in a situation Ooh. where we'd even be talking about divorce Ooh. and vice versa. Vice versa. Absolutely. Ooh. Come on, Tracy. No, and I think Everything she just said, I mean, and there's no deal breakers, you know what I mean? I mean, what we have and what we have communicated to each other um, from the year that we met before we got married and, and this past year is something very special, something that I cherish very dearly. Um, I worship the ground this woman walks on, and I know she does uh, the same thing for me. Yes. Um, so, you know, I mean, this is, this is easy. This is easy yeah. living right here. This is easy peasy. When mm. we talk how we have a life that's that's almost, you know, I, I wouldn't say perfect because we're not perfect. There's no perfect couple, um, but we got the, we close. Yeah, we close because we have oh, a good oh. we have a good time together, <laughs> we and see. we enjoy each other's company. So it's not like living with somebody. And just got you got to imagine too. We spent the whole year in lockdown together. Mm -hmm. I mean, we spent the whole year in a yeah. cell. We spent the whole year <laughs> in a one bedroom apartment, almost for a whole year together yeah. during the um, pandemic and. We wasn't at each other's throats. And um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that you said we've communicated a lot of things. And I think that is a piece that is missing in so many relationships from the beginning to communicate those things, like mm -hmm. Cherie said, to respect each other. So mm -hmm. many people miss those little key things of you respect me, I respect you, there's no deal breakers. We, we both know at our age what disrespect looks like. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have problems around money. money. A lot of couples, a lot of people get divorced because money. Mm -hmm. How how are finances handled in your home? Because we had two other couples that were amazing before you. And I want other couples to understand that there is no cookie cutter, that there is no, you know, we hear these relationship goals, you know, Sheree and Tracy's relationship goal. Y'all know what Sheree and Tracy be going through or they done lost parents and stuff and they, so we got to get past those relationship goals. So when it comes to money, you know, some people have two accounts. Some women are, what's his is mine, what's mine is mine. And then <laughs> how does that work for you guys? Just like that with hers, with hers is mine and what's mine is hers and hers is mine and all that other stuff. <laughs> well, I, you know, listen, I'm, I'm a, and I'll let, I'm an alpha male. So I'm going to just, I'm going to take care of Sheree. This is my wife. I'm going to protect her. I'm going to make sure she's okay. So it Wait a minute, I'm leaving now. So it doesn't, I'm, I'm a go. I'm a it doesn't it doesn't matter what she has, what she has going on. I'm taking care of the house. I'm building the house. I'm I'm, I'm all that stuff. I'm gonna do all that stuff. This is my wife here. Um, so I don't get into you know, and we're building a future together. As I spoke about earlier, how we're setting up my our children and our grandchildren's future um, financially to make sure that they're safe. So that's our main focus. Our main focus is not. Can you give me half of the cable bill or can you pay half the mortgage or anything like that? Our focus is on I need to provide a, a safe home and a home for this woman. And then, and then I need to build a house for this woman. And this woman needs to turn it into a home. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold it. Hold it. Because I want the women that are listening right now. This man said, I don't care what my wife has. I am a man and I'm going to take care of my home because... We are living in a society right now where brothers is looking for roommates and women is falling for the okie doke. Mm. And I just want women to understand that this man right here as a grown black man said, 
quite grown. I am building a quite grown black man. So that I'm building a legacy for not only me, but our children and our grandchildren. And I handles my business. This woman ain't got to give me two cents. Mm -hmm. So y'all better check yourself. Come on in, Sheree. I'm sorry. I just had to have, because women believe that they really supposed to be giving half. And I'm, you know, y'all know I'm single right now. So brothers be tall. I be like, mm-mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I got to say this. My ex-husband was like, Tracy, he was an alpha male. He was raised, his father. He said, every, when I was, I never had to lift a finger, pay a dime. If I did, he's like, little, little girl, go somewhere and sit down with your little coins. Mm -hmm. Like, no. So come on in, Tracy. I mean, Sheree, I'm sorry, but. <laughs> and Tracy, let me see, your lipstick is so pretty. Just FYI. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I told you I had to show up for you because I know you. Look at the glasses and the hair and the earrings. <laughs> So, you know, we, we are blessed and we are very fortunate. And I do, I live with a replica of my grandfather. My grandmother was also, my grandparents were in education. My, both of them were teachers, but my grandfather cared for every aspect of our lives. And I, I have channeled him and that's Tracy. And so, no, I don't, I don't worry about those types of things. Now, I don't want to give the impression that I don't do anything because that's not true either. The beauty is, is that, you know, hey, what's in the joint account? We have to order windows or we have to, you know, we're building a house. Um, so there are things that there are times when I have to contribute to the overall building of, again, our foundation and our legacy. But as far as just day to day, general stuff. No, I don't. Um, I don't take care of any of that. Um, I, my, you know, I get to say like, we're going to go have a fun vacation <laughs> or, you know, or, or be able to do those things. Like he was saying, like the fact that we're able to really build legacy, we're going to, you know, we're going to pass down some level of generational wealth. Like we're, we're just fortunate to be able to do that. We really are. And we don't ever take that for granted. We really don't. Um, you know, to be able to live off of one income is we're fortunate. We own where, where we live, you know, and, and so we have very minimal um, overhead in that regard. But th that's back to being aligned. It really is back to Tracy brought a certain level of things to our relationship. I brought a certain level of things to our relationship. And together, some of my business acumen, some of the things that we did, it just really elevated both of us. And that's why partnership and doing it together is so the way that it was supposed to be, mm -hmm. you know, because doing it by yourself, it just takes a little longer and a little bit more time doing it together just makes it so much more easy. So I'm very fortunate. And you know what, it, it, there's some women that want to pay half and they, and they, and they, they, they value themselves on what they bring to the table. I just don't, I, I value the fact that, you know, I'm a place of peace. I value the fact that, you know, there's things about business that I understand that him as an entrepreneur, we shifted the way he does business that makes it more efficient and makes his time working less or makes the paper in his office, you know, you know, change. Like those nuances, those intrinsic things is what, you know, I um, compliment him in. And so those you know those are the important things not my paycheck or any of those things so very and listen here to the men like she said it's not like i don't bring anything to the table but i believe a grown man should never expect a woman to come and pay half because if you was on your own brother you'd have to pay all that yourself and when you have the right woman that comes along like sheree said he don't i know if something got to be done i do it because I know this man take care of me. And Cherie says this all the time. My husband loves me and cherishes me. So when it's time for me to kick in, there's no question of him having to ask me. We don't have to ask about money or whatever. If I see something that needs to be done, I do it. So people think when a woman says the man is supposed to pay everything, that she's a leech. No, a man is supposed to be responsible and accountable for some things that a grown man should be responsible and accountable for. And mm -hmm. a woman should come in and compliment. If I find the right man, of course, I'm not going to just keep my money and be like, I'm going to hold on to my money until you die or whatever. I'm going to be like, you know what I'm saying? So I just want people to understand. The conversations we're having is, when are we retiring? The conversations that we're having is, I'm not going to have to work this many years. I can work less so that we can enjoy our lives together. Like Those are the conversations that we're having. That's how we're contributing you know, the money that I make into our future. So, you know, so those, we're just, we grown. 
So we want now. <laughs> we grow, so we have a grown folks conversation. conversation. Absolutely. You know, and 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 that's really where we're at. And and I think also to Trey, you know, trust plays a major part in this. Yeah, you know I mean, trust plays a major part. You just don't trust people with your finances. Um, oh. I had to be very careful um, getting in the relationship, being who I am, and and uh, and vice versa with her too. Um, so there's a trust factor that goes into this. You know, what I mean, I trust her. I, I you know, I turn over wealth to her because this Aww. is life, for life and, and we're doing this together and we don't have five, 10 years to go through this whole trust thing. Uh, let me give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And no, we ain't got time for that. We got to create a future for ourselves and for our family. And we have to do that right now. And right now involves trusting each other um, to make that happen. And we do that. Whoa. Whoa, y'all be this is why I love y'all be dropping them. Y'all coming up in here and dropping the mic. So I always like to know about this with um couples. What how do you handle the dynamic of male and female friends in your relationship? Your male if Tra if Cherie has male friends or if Tracy has female friends, how does that work for y'all? Hmm. It you know, so back to trust, trust in every way. My my best friend. Um, was in our wedding, a man. He was going to walk my mother down. Obviously, she passed away, but he walked my aunt down. So he he was my best friend. And those are a couple, you know, he and his wife are a couple that we do social social things together. His wife helped plan my surprise bridal shower. Um, but he and I were friends first. Mm -hmm. um, and so th that trust is there. Um, Tracy, obviously, we live in the city that Tracy grew up with. There are tons of people that know him, men, women, you know, all that. So again, it's back to trusting, you know, trusting who he is and, you know, being inclusive. He's very inclusive of me. It's not like he's got some relationship with someone that's, that's, you know, outside of me. He, his relationships include me and me his. So um, we're pretty, you know, transparent about that type of engagement and interaction. Inclusive. I like that word. I love that the, word. The other thing too, Trey, because I, I, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an advocate, I, I do a lot of community work. So I'm on Zoom calls and, and touch and, and do business with, with women and men all, all the time. So once again, you know, it's not about who's calling me and, and who I'm going to see because that trust is there. So, you know, that's part of um, our life and that's part of who I am. So I think and I've never, ever, we've never, ever had that problem. So, yeah, it's, it's all about trust. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all heard that it's all about trust. If you just tuned in, you're tuned into Love Lessons and Classes in Session. And our guest instructors are the Cyfaxes, Tracy and Cherie Cyfax. And they are dropping some gems here tonight. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat and we will definitely let them answer them. I'll, I'll read some of them in the comments and we'll let them answer them. So, um this is new for you guys. And when fighting, right? And we talk about fair fighting and because no relationship is perfect. Mm -hmm. Cherie, how do you deal with anger? And Tracy, how do you deal with anger? You know, for the most part, we do a pretty good job at that. We definitely, um, I've worked a lot. In fact, part of my coaching with women is out of this book, Nonviolent Communication. I, I studied it in my master's program in leadership and just understanding how to speak with compassion, understanding how to talk about ooh, how something makes you feel, um, understanding how not to project on another person. You did this or you always do that. You know, just being really, really mindful. Now, it doesn't happen every single time. I don't get it right 100% of the time. But I think the goal is we we don't try to go low. You know, we don't try to say things that we would hate to not, you know, to, to that we can't take back. Um, I think we respect each other enough where we just know where to draw the line. We know when it goes too far. And um, we just try not to draw, try not to go across try not to cross that line. Um, we've definitely had some stressful and pressure things. I mean, obviously, you know, we have planned a wedding. We have lost parents that we're very close to. We have broke ground on a home. We have, I mean, we've done so many things in such a short amount of time and, and, and tensions do get high, but at the end of the day, we love each other so much and both of us do a very good job at saying, hey, my bad, I could have done that differently. You know, I learned something about myself. I learned that I still 
this is a trigger for me. And, you know, this is how it made me feel and having compassion for each other. And I know for, for me, I know some of this is new for Tracy. Tracy hasn't always been, you know, vulnerable in relationship. He hasn't always been transparent in relationship. He hasn't always used his communication skills. He communicates well when he's got a mic in his hand. But as far as relationship, that just always hasn't been, you know, the case. So we have to be graceful with each other. And usually I'm the one that's, you know, being the better person in the communication. But there are times when I falter and he, you know, and he picks up the slack and he's, you know, being the accountable one or saying, hey, you know, we're, I'm feeling a little off or whatever those things are. So we just keep that line of communication open. We commit to each other. I don't go to bed mad. My father died of a pulmonary embolism, was here one minute, gone the next. So I don't, I don't go to bed mad with people I love. And um, we just don't let it go too far. Mm-hmm. And I think, and in, in, in to add to that, you know, me and Sheree, we have we check in every Sunday, so we have Sunday check in um, on Sunday, where you know, if it, and and I think it works out real good because what happens if something happened during the week and it bothered me, instead of me, you know, addressing it right then, and we may be doing something that's more important, I could save that and say, you know what, I'll address that on Sunday, and typically by Sunday, you know what. It wasn't even that bad. It didn't even that matter. And even if I need to discuss it, I'm in a more calmer and a more safer space to have that conversation. So those Sunday check-ins um, work very well for us. Um, we get opportunity to sit. She drinks her tea and I drink my coffee. And, and we talk about us and how, how the week went. And, you know, and sometimes they get intense. But, you know, it's, it's, it's what we do on Sunday. So it works out very well for us. Plus, I spend a lot of time meditating. <laughs> I try to slow this brain down every morning. So spending time in meditation, exercising, we work out together. So we do things. To, we walk together. We do things to make sure that we alleviate the stress that, that, that may be coming into our space and make sure we stay into, into a happy space. And connected. Mm-hmm. We, I love that. Did y'all hear that couples that are listening right now and those who desire to be married and those who are engaged, they have a Sunday check-in. So many people don't get help or check in with each other until there's a problem. Yeah. There should be a plan. Like we get an oil change. Like we go and get our hair done. We maintain our hair. We do maintenance on our body. We go to the doctor to get our six month checkup. So many people don't check in on their relationships until the D word comes up or until it's a, a drastic problem. So to check in every Sunday to say, babe, you OK? And mm-hmm. to be able to sit down and know, like Tracy said, I've, I've taken that time to process whatever it was that was bothering me, because maybe in that moment it wasn't it was serious, like, oh, but then to give yourself the chance to think about it. I love that. So if you don't take anything away, anybody that's married, couples take away a day to sit down and say, are you okay? Because so many of us, and I know Tracy and Sheree, I know you guys hear this because you guys coach couples now on dating. I know you hear so many, I didn't even know this was going to happen. And when I, when I coach pe- women through infidelity, like I had no clue. And I'm like, as we work through it, they did have a clue. Mm-hmm. They just didn't check in on the clue. They had a clue. They had many clues. <laughs> and I'm like, y'all just didn't talk about it. So I hope everybody heard that. So in the, somebody had a question, and I'll have this for both of you. I'll have both of you answer this. How did you know she was the one, Tracy? How did you know he wanted he wanted to marry her? And how did you know that he was the one, Cherie? How did y'all know that y'all was right for each other? Well, I, I think um, it all started when we first met. You know what I mean? Cherie profile pretty much jumped off the page when I first met her. Um, <laughs> But it was the follow up after that. Um, you know, I think it was when I knew Cherie was the one spending those times, those months that we spent in the pandemic, basically just communicating via Zoom um, every single day, whether we were having Zoom lunch, coffee and just talking. So we spent a lot of time building a foundation of communication. Um, I've never had anybody ask me what is my love language. I got to learn a little bit about her love language. She got to learn about mine. Um, so, so many things built the foundation. Um, so by the time we got together, she was my person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for me, it was a, quite a few things. You know, first of all, Tracy's just so handsome. And that caught my eye, obviously. Um, but the 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 
his compassion, his kindness. He was so vulnerable. And I wasn't used to kind of a manly man being so vulnerable. Um, he made it easy for me to be me. Uh, you know, I came through the door communicating what, what, my, what I needed. You know, he wanted to know what I wanted. And I said, hey, I want to be married you know, and it may not be to you and that's okay, but that's what I want. And I'm going to prioritize men who want to be married. And he didn't shrink back and say, Ooh, you know, or anything. He just rolled with it. And it was his consistency. It was just um, his walking in his purpose. You know, he's, he's really serious about the work he, the advocacy work he does around, you know, formerly incarcerated people and his community. So that's a level of integrity. That's some character. Um, so there was just a lot of things that, again, in that soulmate list that I had, the soulmate poem, that he just fit. And it just felt like we just fit together. Um, and with kind of my my background in, you know, my mom being the Black Panther and all that, George Floyd died in early on in our dating. He was so supportive of how I navigated at my company, um, being, you know, one of the very few. I'm a unicorn in my industry. So there were just so many things along the way. Early on, he introduced me to his family. He professed you know, early on, um, he wanted me to come live with him. And I was like, I am not living with, the next man I live with is going to be my husband. So he made a huge um, financial gesture that let me know that he was serious about, you know, being with me. So there were just things that he did to incorporate me in his life. He talked about me in future, you know, when we build our home, when we do this, let me sit down and let's go over our financials so we can know, what, you know, like, he was just very inclusive. So there was all the things that he did to let me know he was committed to us. And it made it easy for me to lean into that. And they build in their home. I seen it. I'm like, oh, can I? I'm coming to visit as soon as it's done. And it was. And again, I've watched you guys grow so much. And remember at the beginning when Tracy wasn't really a planner of dates. And then when he planned the, the whole thing inside your home and it's not even built and he had the food and the, and the, the live music, I said, this man right here, I, listen, ladies, we're not settling anymore. This man is setting the bar high. If you are not following the side facts, the side facts, then you're doing yourself a disservice because they are teaching how to love. They are giving love lessons on a daily basis. And we have another question. I do want to address this because it's on my list. Go ahead. Thank you for saying that because Tracy has evolved. I mean, I have too, but Tracy has evolved. Um, I say, you know, I, be be the woman who teaches the old dog new tricks because it's stuff that Tracy probably never thought he would do <laughs> that he has done. And that I, I want to inspire a man to do that. I've been with men that I did not inspire them to you know, care for me in that way. And that just wasn't my man. It didn't mean he was a bad or a wrong man. He just wasn't my man. So ladies, if a man isn't caring for you in that way, he's not your man and that's okay. Release him, release yourself so you can find your man. Mm. Mm. Wait, okay. did, she just, did she just hit a high 16? Is she, <laughs> is, is she a rapper too, Tracy? Is she, she got <laughs> yeah. bars? She got bars. <laughs> <laughs> she, got some bars, absolutely. She, she got bars. We have a question that I really want to talk about, too, because I did want to talk about this, too, because one of my things is we talk about stress and sex. So in the comments we have as a seasoned couple, how do you deal with intimacy within the marriage? Married over 25 years at times, sex is lacking. Try introducing new things. Husband is only interested in his own. So how do you guys at this age? Because really, and I and I love my network, the New You Nation network that you're tuned into right now is for Generation X and beyond. We talking about real grown folks stuff. We're not doing millennial stuff and we're not doing Gen Z stuff. We talking about really our bodies are changing right now. Some some things are happening for us as women, like we having some hot flashes and some stuff that we ain't <laughs> used to. So how, are you, how do you guys navigate through that? And what would you tell this woman who is asking this question? I think um, I think what we do, we keep it sexy. I mean, we enjoy <laughs> each other. I mean, I think date nights, we, me and Shree hang out. So, you know, to go out and party and, and to spend time with each other and have a good time with each other. You know, remember, we don't have any kids. So, yes. I mean, we do what that's we want to do. And, yeah, and I think that keeps it sexy. It keeps it spicy. And and once again, we enjoy each other. And look at her. Sex with 
<laughs> so silly. And, you know, part of my wedding vows was about having being abundant in sex. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think far too often we dismiss or don't talk about sex and intimacy. And it's so important. And I mean, we cuddle and we snuggle and we hug and we touch each other and we, you know, we, 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 we hit each other on the butt and we stop in the middle of the hallway and give each other a kiss. And we, we do that because you know, I, I am a woman of a certain age. I have fibroids and there's times when I can't be physical, but I can be intimate. And that is a difference. The intimacy is what's important. The intimacy is what connects our heart. Mm. So we keep flowers. I mean, mm. we keep flowers coming in our house. Mm. We keep candles lit. We keep incense burning. We keep, I keep lingerie flowing in the house. I, you know, we just do those things so that there's always something interesting. We, you know, we live in Central Jersey, but we come to Philly to a nice hotel so that we can get away and we can be treated in luxury. We, you know, every once in a while, I want to be some. I'm somebody different. You know, mm -hmm. I, I. It's just we have to keep it spicy, and we have to, you know, make coupons. You know, have him look for something when he comes home. Have a trail of roses so he can come find you. Run a bath water for him. You know, there's all kinds of things that we, as women, you know, should be doing. In my opinion, to keep our love life um, as a priority, it's just as much of a priority as everything else is. I love what both of you said, but I love what Tracy said. Intimacy. He said we hang out. We do. We that's intimate. We hang out together. We go to the jazz club. We go to the cigar bar. We sit in the backyard. We hang out together like friends and we have fun. We always think that intimacy is sex. And and th those things that when you do that, when you hang out together and you genuinely have a good time, when you come home, when you come home, it's lit because we just had a good time at the club. You were shaking your thing, girl. We just drank that cognac that you you don't because uh, I know I know y'all drink that chopped shell stuff, uh, stuff that yeah. you can't even name. We just had little, little Louis the Eighteenth. Like, come on now, let's let's take this to a home. So let's. I know y'all. I know. And and again, for the women who thank, she said thank you. So we have to remember men and women that intimacy, like like Cherie said, sometimes I can't, or sometimes he won't be able to because we are of a certain age. There's other things to do. There's there's other ways to make a person feel good that will get that person back into the mood. So we got to be mindful of that. So we got 10 minutes. I, I have to ask this. Love language is around uh, words of affirmation and physical touch. So oh. massages, I'm always telling him how much I appreciate him, how handsome he is, how sexy he is. I'm just always just affirming. Look at that smile. Look at yeah. that smile. <laughs> Because we, I don't know that we do that enough. You know, I don't have a problem stroking my man's ego at all because my man takes good care of his wife. So oh. it's just, it, it, I, we, I enjoy him. We flirt. I love it. He just <laughs> blushing. Hey, I mean, look at the smile on his face right now says it all. I mean, he like a little 12 year old with his little 11 year old crush. Mm -hmm. He just like, the, yes. The, the, the candy store. <laughs> the candy store, girl. Listen, that's, I'm just saying. So, one last thing I just want to touch on before I, I just have you guys give your final word to everybody that's listening and where they can find you and get your books and, and your dating um, tips and how to set up their dating profile and all that. Because I want everybody to know where to find you guys. Social media etiquette. The, the world, people's relationships are failing, drowning, suffering from DMs and improper social media etiquette. What is proper social media etiquette for you guys? I, used to, I tell men now. Because, you know, I get some DMs. And I'm like, if you can't say it on my wall, don't say it to me at all. Because I'm not on Facebook dating. There's a Facebook dating app. I'm not on that. Now, if you want, if I'm over there, say what, say it to me. But what is social ed ed um, social media etiquette for you guys? Because I know that you guys have to be on social media with your businesses. And I know women, both of y'all fly. I mean, I know somebody up in them DM. Both of y'all. <laughs> Look at y'all. <laughs> oh, oh. I don't see that many people. Not, not 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 since I've been married. Of course, not since I've been married. I don't see a lot of people in my DMs like I used to since I've been married. Um, um, but you know, I don't think we we have a problem. Do you men be in your DM, baby? That I don't know about. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what? If anyone comes in my DMs, I if if I think it's even remotely um, 
inappropriate. I block them. I just don't even entertain it. I don't have a lot. I do have, I have had some in general, um, weird stuff that I'm not sure what it was. Mm. And, and I just block them. I just don't even entertain that. And, mm. You know, and we'll get that spam. You know, I'll get every, that. every once in a while we get some spam and stuff like that. But you know, the other piece is like, you know, Tracy is so busy. I have his phone. If you DM in him, I can see everything you DM. <laughs> so, I would DM her. All right. <laughs> so I would can be like, girl, he, he got a good wife. Uh -huh. He sure ain't gonna be messing it up for nobody that's in his DMs. <laughs> uh, that wouldn't be good for him. Health last, finances, none of it. <laughs> but um, but no, we just, you know, I think there's an energy that we have. And I just believe somehow, some way, where I, the universe and God protects us. And I think people know, don't even do that. Don't even embarrass yourself like that <laughs> because we real we married, married, yeah. and and neither one of us are straying. And mm -hmm. I just think that that's just the energy we carry, and and we've been fortunate in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said in the clip at the beginning, we ain't just happy on social media because mm -hmm. this ain't this ain't no play play. No. So I want you, this ain't play play because there's a lot of people out here that's play playing mm -hmm. on social media. You know, they look one and you way. Attract, you attract energy, energy that you, you attract attract, energy yes, that you put out. So we don't we, attract we don't put out yeah, that type of put, energy. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think yeah. we attract that because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, if, you, if you're weak enough to try to come at one of us, you ain't you you aren't worth our us. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you're that weak where you would even try to come between this beautiful black excellent love, mm -hmm. you're not even worthy of either of us responding to mm -hmm. you. Woo! Because you are on our platform. Mm -hmm. you, should, all you should be doing is in our DM saying inspiration. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. This, she always dropped the mic. She, she just always dropped the mic. That's why I love her. I'll be bringing her on here for because I'll be trying to start trouble. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna tell the truth, Tracy. I bring Sheree on because I'll be a tr I'm troublemaking. I'm like, let me bring Sheree on here, set these folks straight because she gonna say what she need to say. So, what would be a final word that you would like to give to those who are married, those who desire to be married, and those who especially are about to walk down the aisle? Oh, wow. I'll let the expert handle that. Ooh, so for those who are married, you know, actually, thank you for being our inspiration. Thank you for being examples to us. We have been fortunate to have so many amazing couples um, as examples for us. So, so we appreciate that. You know, it gets tough at times, but everybody, just everyone has to wake up with the desire to continue to be together and just don't quit on the same day, <laughs> you know, really. Um, but but marriage, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, like somebody was telling Steph Curry that you don't want to be out here in these streets, you know, um, whatever you originally, however you originally fell in love with that person. Remember those moments. Remember, remember the, the moments that were good moments and lean into those much more often than you lean into the moments that aren't as happy. For those of you who desire marriage, it is out there. You just have to understand and know that it is. Do you say there are no good men? Then there will be no good man. Do you say all men cheat? Then you will attract cheaters. If you say that there is abundance out there and there's an amazing man just waiting for me, then he will be waiting for you and do the thing that it takes internally and externally to attract him to you. And for those of you getting ready to walk down the aisle, I say communicate, be transparent, be honest, but be, but communicate with compassion. I, you know, sometimes I tell Tracy, you know, radical honesty. Are we, can we have that conversation? Mm -hmm. And it just lets him know I'm getting ready to drop something deep. I'm getting ready to be vulnerable and transparent. I don't need you to defend anything. I just need you to hear me. And we have to have those safe words to be able to do and have some of those real conversations because that's where the trust is. That's where you grow. You grow in those moments. Um, and that's where, you know, love can be tested. Mm -hmm. But if you stay committed, um, stay honest with each other, trust each other, be vulnerable with each other, then, you know, there's just so much more blossoming on the other end of that. Don't think that just because you're mad at each other in this moment or you're having a challenge in this moment, that that is how it's going to be forever. It's just a moment in time. And you both have the ability to change that. So don't be the one who's not talking. We don't not talk. That's just not what we do. One of either one of us has to have the humility to say the relationship is bigger than my ego right now. We don't not talk. I ain't, I'm not never being with a man again that don't talk. Like we're not gonna be in no house, nobody not people not talking to each other. That's childish. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm 52. I ain't got time for that. Like 
somebody, I'm going to say something, you know, and I, and I speak to my, you know, women that I talk, they say, well, he came home with an attitude. He didn't speak to me. I'm like, well, did you speak to him? Yeah. Cause he didn't speak to you. You didn't speak to him. So ain't nobody speaking to nobody. Like how that's going to work. Did you touch him? Mm. Did you look into him? Did you see how his day was? How can I make this better? You know? Yeah. yeah. Or can I give you space and know that it's not me? It's something you're oh. processing and that's okay too. Can I give you space? Can I give you space? I'm sorry, because you know we are we could be like, oh well, what's the matter? And why are you this and why are you that? Like, mm -hmm. yo, chill, ladies. We we need to chill sometimes. You said two things that I love. Don't quit on the same day. And can we have radical honesty? Because I'm about to say something. I just need you to receive it and not take it personally because it is always out of love. So tell everybody where they can find you. Tell them about your services. Tell them what anything. I'm I'm here on love lessons to not lead the people lead the people to a dead end. Every one of my couples have had services to give to people, and that's why I want you here because I know how you guys rock. So please tell everybody where they can find you. So um, we are at www.justthefacts, J-U-S-T-T-H-E-P-H-A-X.com. That's where we do dating facts. It's um, my relationship coaching. We, you know, take mundane profiles and we turn them into something magnificent. If this, the dating piece is what you want help with. But usually what I find is that there's so much more there. There's layers of healing that need to take place. So I do have an Activate Your Amazing coaching program. Um, we are on Instagram at just J-U-S-T-P-H-A-X. And then Tracy has tracycyfax.com where you can find his book from the block to the boardroom. We both are coming out with new books, so stay tuned. Um, we have a BET series called Love, Love, Ugh. Love Me, Love Me Not. And that is on BET Her, their digital platform on YouTube. Um, and so we're a lot of places and we have something coming up big on the 31st. I'll, I'll share it with you, Dre, later so you can put it out there. But um, we'll, we'll be on a major network soon. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, no, it's just we have, you know, I feel like our marriage has helped me walk in my purpose. Um, I started with Empowering Women in my podcast, the Leader and Lover podcast. And now that has just, it's just grown into me really impacting women's lives. And so I'm so thankful to my husband for showing up for me, you know, in a space that hasn't historically been his space. You know, talk about activism, you know, equity for returning citizens, that's his space. But to talk about love and relationship and all that stuff, it's not, but he shows up for me every week. So you always want someone who's going to be a gift to you. They will support your purpose. They won't be an enemy of your greatness. Um, and so I, we have that in each other. Ooh, any final words, Tracy? Oh, wow. I think she said it all. I think she said I it all. This. And I just, you know, <clears throat> and like she said, giving her um, and, and supporting her and the opportunity to walk, walk in her space and, and to, to walk in her purpose and to do the things that that I know that's near and dear to her. And I, and I get an opportunity to, um, to sit and have a front row seat of her transformation over the past, you know, what, nine, 10 months that you pops, you know, that you basically have been, you know, building that foundation and it's, and it's been a great ride. And, you know, this is what I do. So I teach entrepreneurship. So I teach people how to start and run um, successful business. So I get a first row seat um, to work with one of my favorite students. <laughs> oh, started from the bottom. Now we here. <laughs> Even though y'all didn't start from the bottom, but you know, it's just a song, but started from the bottom. Now we're here. And I just love you guys because I have watched this thing blossom before it was a thing. And it has been amazing. It has been amazing, inspiring, encouraging, motivating, and more than anything, it has given me a different hope in love. Like mm -hmm. so many people have lost hope in love so many black people have lost hope in love and you guys have restored it the worst thing to do is to feel hopeless right to not feel like you are ever going to be loved again and mm -hmm. you guys have opened up a flower for so many people to say it's possible and i thank you and if you guys are not following them please follow them at just facts i promise you they have been um on forbes new york times own uh, they are just blossoming and growing. And I just can't wait to see what God is going to do for you. And like I said to you, Sheree, when we talked, all the doors are opening because you're going the right way. 
I, there's I no stops that. and there's no blocks because God is saying, yes, I put my stamp on this and you have done the right thing. So for any naysayer or people like, oh, you know, online dating for any naysayer, God has stamped and approved this thing in so many ways. And I just can't wait to see what he's going to do. So I thank you to Side Faxes and I encourage everybody to follow friend and like them so you can see this journey go from where it is now because I know it's going somewhere. I know this is going international. I know this is going to the masses. So thank you for tuning into Love Lessons. Remember, happy house, happy spouse, happy house. I will see you guys soon. Yes. Thank you so much because you we were on your platform before any of that happened. Aww. And we just value and appreciate our relationship, our friendship. You, like you said, you have seen us before all this took place and just we're, we're always gracious with your audience, with your platform. And we can't thank you enough because not enough people do that. Yes. You know, it's about how many followers do you have? Or even, you know, now everybody wants us to be on their platform. <laughs> At first they didn't, you know, so, so we appreciate you. And I, and uh -oh. that, I always want you to know that. Thank you. Don't make me cry. Come on now. Don't make me cry. So I love everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. If you just tuned in, you tuned into Love So Love Lessons. Again, remember, happy spouse, happy house. No <laughs> one is more important than the other. So thank you for tuning in and we will see you next time. Peace and blessings.